Over the past year and a half, Razer has slowly made the blade stealth faster and more of an actual gaming laptop in terms of performance. So first, they gave it a quad-core CPU in early 2019, then the MX150, then the GTX 1650 Max-Q and the new Ice Lake CPUs, and now they bumped it up again to the 1650Ti Max-Q, and they also increased the TDP of the CPU from 15 watts to 25 watts. It's the same CPU, but it can now consume more power for higher clock speeds. There's also been a couple of other changes, both good and bad, which we'll talk about as we go through the laptop. The build of the Blade Stealth hasn't changed at all. It's still a unibody aluminum housing and a black anodized finish. It's a very well-built laptop in terms of structural rigidity and strength, but I really wish they offered it in like a dark gray or a white finish on all the different configurations. Because as nice as black looks, it shows oils very easily. But if you have a dark gray finish or really anything other than black, it becomes almost impossible to see it. Just look at the Space Gray MacBook, for example. In terms of strength, there's very little flex on the screen and on the keyboard deck. It's actually better than the MacBook Pro for structural rigidity, kind of cool to see. The hinge can be opened with one hand and it is stiff enough to completely resist moving when you tap on it half close. That in and of itself is already quite difficult to do, especially when you need to do it consistently across all the laptops that you're selling but it's not stiff enough to minimize the screen wobble enough to where it's not really noticeable. This is only really relevant to the 4K touchscreen. The 1080p model does not support touch. And to be clear, I don't really notice it when I'm using this thing on my lap. You actually need to like poke the screen to get it to wobble a significant amount. Uh, one last thing that I wanna mention regarding the physical build of this laptop, the rubber feet that they use are incredibly grippy. You can smack this laptop laterally and it will not move. Really nice to see. The keyboard I would say is good, but not like particularly comfortable to type on. And the two factors for that are the short key travel and the somewhat cramped layout. To start with the good, it's tactile. They fixed the arrow key layout so you have a full size right shift, something I personally use regularly. My typing speed and accuracy are both great, no issues there. But the thing with the key travel is as long as it's tactile, it won't really affect your typing speed and accuracy, at least in my experience. It's really just a comfort thing. And regarding the layout, you'll notice that a lot of the modifier keys are shorter in width. The tilde key is really small, the backspace is smaller, the pipe key is quite small. And to be clear, I'd much rather have those keys be smaller than to have Razer cramp the entire keyboard. So like the alpha cluster where you spend 99% of your time with, not a big issue and relatively easy to get used to since most of the important keys like backspace and shift are all easy to hit, but just for the sake of being thorough, right? I think the trackpad is the same one from the last few generations, so my only criticism with this is the weight. I find it just a little bit heavier than other trackpads, but it's very smooth and it has this very subtle like silicone finish to it. It gives it a soft touch feel to the surface, which I personally like. The tracking accuracy and acceleration are both good, although I find that the tracking with very small movements could definitely be improved. Like if you wanna move your text cursor just one character over to correct a spelling mistake, that's something pretty much all Windows trackpads don't do very well with. Great trackpad, but just a little bit heavier than others. I'm not gonna to spend too much time with the speakers like I normally do, but the short of it is it just lacks space, right? That's really it. They get very loud, they have good detail and clarity, but it just needs a dedicated subwoofer. If you cut the base off something like the Surface Laptop 3 or the MacBook Air speakers, that's kind of what this sounds like. Everything else is good except for the bass response. They have two screen options with this, a 1080p 120Hz and a 4K touchscreen. Again, I'm reviewing the 4K touchscreen model. I think it's really cool that they're now offering a high refresh panel for 13 inch laptops, especially now that CPUs and GPUs are becoming more power efficient. In terms of image quality, I think the brightness, contrast, and color gamut are all good, but not particularly noteworthy. But the color accuracy on this is exceptionally good. I think it's right up there with the MacBook Pro. Unfortunately, I did notice very obvious ghosting when I was browsing the web, and it wasn't even something that I was looking out for. I just happened to scroll down a web page. It was in dark mode, and the text was smearing quite heavily. 
So I would probably recommend the 1080p panel because you also get better battery life, it's nicer for gaming, and it probably has better response times. I mean, I don't have one to test, but I can't imagine it being worse than this. Port selection, I would say, is good on the blade for an average user. So you have two Thunderbolt 3s and two USB A's with a headphone jack on the left. And as an added bonus, you can also charge the laptop from either side. It's pretty cool. In terms of specs and performance, they're all running the same CPU and GPU with 16 gigs of RAM. And this thing pushes out very good frame rates for such a small and lightweight 13 inch laptop. If you want to play more demanding games, you're going to need to drop it to around low to medium graphics at 1080p, which is what I would expect from a 1650 Ti. The thermals on this are also quite a bit better than the MacBook, the Surface Laptop, and the XPS 13. But you'd also expect that given that this thing also needs to be able to cool the 1650 Ti properly under a full system load. That was all done with the fans at full speed by the way, which means you've still got quite a bit of headroom to reduce fan speed and fan noise without thermal throttling. There's a 53 watt hour battery inside that will get you about five and a half hours of battery life and presumably more if you go for the 1080p model. They also include a bigger 100 watt USB-C charger now, which in my testing did not drain the battery under a full system load. I know that was a pretty big complaint with the previous model and it also gives the CPU that higher TDP for better performance. So win-win overall. The thing with the Razer Blade Stealth is that it's very expensive, right? It starts at $1,800 for the 1080p model and $2,000 for the 4K model, but it's also the smallest 13-inch laptop with a GTX 1650 Ti, and they executed it very well. Good thermals to back it up, manual fan control, and just an overall good laptop. If you need high performance in a 13-inch form factor, not a 14 or a 15-inch one, then this is probably what you're looking for. But if you don't, I think the MacBook, the Surface Laptop, and the XPS 13 does everything else just slightly better. The speakers, the keyboard, the trackpad, the screen, and battery life. This is good in those areas, but if you want absolutely no compromises on the keyboard if you're an author, or the screen if you're a content creator, then that's what those laptops really excel at. I think these are all really good laptops overall, with one or two things that they each do much better than the rest. Okay, that is the end of this video. It ended up being a lot longer than normal, so I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.